a highlight of that uh, training session in Pennsylvania was the great, the one and only Luthes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, um, some, you know, you had, you met him, you had pictures with him. I met him uh, and his wife, his lovely wife, Charlie. And just, you know, uh, you talk about intimidating. I mean, it was intimidating for me to have to go live and do my thing with him sitting on the sidelines watching. Uh, that was a unique thing because I had never now musically I've experienced that. Okay. Where I played with, you know, like pop musicians, you know, very intimidating musicians, but fighting, come on, you know, you don't, you just do it. Um, but knowing that Lou was there on the sidelines watching, uh, it was, it was pressure for me, believe it or not. Uh, and I tell you, I can't believe how wonderful of a man he was and just so awesomely uh, friendly and just, you know, down to earth. And um, yeah, he was just great. I miss him tremendously. And, uh, you know, it, it's it, the world. It's a great loss with him not not being around anymore. But, you know, he he left his mark. The guy was really outstanding. Yeah, how can I forget that Luthez was one of the clinicians there and, and uh, um, just phenomenal guy. And yeah, to give people, I mean, a little context, like, yeah, Tony was out there. We all, Everybody wrestled. Everybody was going live. And Tony was, you know, pop, pop, pop. I mean, finishing people, like guys that had experience, like, you know, 20, 30 seconds, like, whoa, this is <laughs> from the feet. And uh, yeah, I mean, do you remember what uh, one of the things Lou said publicly about you tony yeah it was and it gives me goosebumps right now because he told his wife this too and he says tony seeing tony is like seeing the ghost of george tragos if that's what you're implying yeah absolutely Uh, one a very legendary catch wrestler in his time yeah and that was that was lou's coach and that that was it and you know this wasn't even my prime because i had had a brain aneurysm in 93 and i couldn't even walk again without any aid of of anything uh until 95 I had to have crutches in a wheelchair and a walker. And, you know, subsequently I started to get uh, physically stronger. Um, so yeah, it wasn't even like I was, uh, eh. you know, I was damaged goods back then, but I, I felt really great. Um, I had just recently broken up with somebody that I was in love with too. Like a couple months before that we broke up in May, if I remember correctly, that was in July. I think that we did that sometime in the summer could have been June. I think um, it was June. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been June. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, going, but just, and then meeting Lou, uh, you know, and, you know, getting the, well, what kind of a guy is he, is he this or is he that, you know, and he was all that, man. He was really just a nice, uh, unbelievably down to earth. Everybody treated him with respect out there uh, and he deserved it. Um, he was, he never really even gave himself as much credit he used to say that he couldn't coach, which just wasn't really true. Maybe in his mind, he wasn't interested in coaching, but we would pick each other's brains. And it was, I mean, I, I, I picked up a lot of from him, you know, little subtleties or little ways that he would do things or the way Ed Strangler Lewis would do it or Ray Steele would do it or Ed Santel or George Tragos. Uh, You know, he would tell me and show me this is how they would do such and such. Um, you know, which yeah, was just to, to make that connection. I mean, he was 80 early eighties, right. When he passed away mm-hmm. in the early two thousands. So keep in mind, someone like that has lived a storied life and is a, is the bridge to that. Those people from the, like the early 1900s, you know what I mean? 1920s, 1930s. Like he was, he had interacted with some of them. So the old timers of his day, I and mean, then he, he was seeing, he had experienced and was able to share those you know, those memories with you or some of those, um, those elements, those techniques even. Yeah. Well, he shared it with a lot of us, you know, even the great Danny Hodge, who just passed away, sadly, you know, Lou would tell stories about when they would wrestle and, and, and work out and uh, things like that. And yeah, just say, say like what my coach, uh, Stanley Robin was even older than Lou. Okay. So Stanley brought elements um, that, you know, into it, but with Lou, the thing about him was uh, he could articulate to me, uh, he could reach me and we would talk on the phone and, you know, all of this, you know, you know, regularly, 
and and not always you know talking about shop but just you know talking about life you know just talking about things hell i was you know 30 something and he was pushing you know he's around 80 you know so i mean there's a lot to learn in life from somebody like that who's been all over you know uh and i think too i've always had respect for elder elderly people in my elders because i've always been around elderly people being raised by my grandparents and all their friends and blah 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 so it was nothing for me to you know look up to and respect older people um but he was worthy of it. I mean, I, I felt, you know, and it was an honor for me uh, to know him and to have him appear on the Lost Art of Hooking. They did a, a video where he interviewed and they, they brought him out there um, to Rochester, New York. And what a great, uh, man, just great. And that's another thing. I'm doing demonstrations of Holt, Lou sitting there off camera, you know, and, you know, he's, you know yeah you know it was just great you know